One final insight I think that we can learn from the life of Abraham. And, and I would phrase that insight this way. Believing God will really be determined by how big we think God is. Fascinating. God will challenge our assumptions. Yeah, you think that I had to work this way or through these people and do that and you got the assumptions. God's going to challenge us. And when they get challenged, we've got a choice. Either believe God and let go of the challenge or don't believe God and, and, and embrace the assumption. And that choice will often be determined by how big we think God is. You know, you know what's fascinating to me? It's what God did to help Abraham believe. Because get this. Abraham is in a tent, and he's, and he's having a vision, is how the Bible puts it. He's like in this, I don't know, trance thing going on inside of his tent. And God goes, no, 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 you know, it's not going to be LA, you're going to have a son. And then get what God does next. We find this in Genesis 15 and verse 5. He, God, took him to Abraham outside and said, did you get that? Abraham, come on, we're leaving the tent. I want you to come outside. And when they went out, it was night. Because God says, well, look up at the heavens and count the stars if indeed you can count them. Do you get the picture? Abraham is out in the desert at night. There aren't any city lights around. The star, have you seen stars like that out in the wilderness? Where it seems like there's, there's a million more than there are on a regular day when you're in a city or around an urban area. And he, he looks at the stars and the constellations and the galaxies. And he looks at it all. And, you know, God said, count the stars. And so Abraham probably went, one, two, three, four. <laughs> it didn't take long, right? It's like, I got, there's, 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 you can't count them, God. There's way too many. And by the way, Abraham, all scholars agree, Abraham knew the story. Where'd all that stuff come from? Well, this God spoke, and it was. He literally spoke a, a world into existence. He, he literally spoke universe into existence, galaxies into existence, solar systems into existence, and he's there staring at it all. And he's supposed to count it, and of course it can't be done. And, then when that process got done, it says, then God said to him, so shall your offspring be. Don't miss an incredible point here. Remember last week, there's a correlation between spirituality and geography. He took him outside and said, Abraham, see you start to look out for us. You can count. And they're a reminder on how big God is, how powerful God is. It's a reminder that God is unlimited in his power and creativity, that the God who interacts with us can do anything. And no wonder, after perusing the bigness of God, Abraham said, okay, I guess if you could do that, you could help an everly couple have a baby. I'll believe you. You know what I found happens in life? It happens almost always in our spiritual journey. We're moving through a busted up world. And it's hard, and it's painful, and it's confusing, and it's frustrating, and it's just not right. You know what I'm saying? And as we move through this busted up world, here's what happens. God gets smaller. And other things seem to get so much bigger. In most of our lives, you know what's really big? Problems, they're really big. Obstacles, that's really big. Our sins, those are really big. Yeah, those, those are big. And God, God seems to get smaller almost as we move through time. And no wonder we live a, a frustrating, vain kind of life when the problems and obstacles and challenges and sins and limitations are huge. And God is like reduced to this small little thing. And, and 
And God says, I, that's, I don't want to be that way because if you see me as small or limited and problems and obstacles and limitations as big, then you're going to miss out on a life that's really life. And so maybe what we need is we need, we need something like what Abraham got. We need something that, that freshly infuses us with this reality that, that God is not small and the problems and limitations and sins and challenges are big, but rather they're not so big and God is huge. <coughs> He's huge. And so I want to leave you this morning with, with, with this. I want to suggest to you that there, there are some things that we could do that if we'll do them, it'll give us fresh glimpses on how big God is. And that if we're living our lives with a, with a daily sense that God is really, really big, bigger and more powerful and smarter than anything, that then we'll look at our assumptions and the problems and the challenges and the sins and the limitations and we'll go, that can all be overcome because God is way bigger than the world. There are three things that we can do. The first thing we do to get fresh glimpses of how big God is, is we could pray boldly. Just pray boldly. You know, sometimes our prayers, can I be honest with you? They're pathetic. Sometimes I listen to myself pray and I'm going, you are pathetic. You're praying as though God is like this big. Oh, God, help me get through the day. And God going, whoo, that's going to be a challenge. A day through a day, I don't know. <coughs> God, would you help the situation to get bigger or get better? I'm, I'm talking about audacious prayers. I, I'm talking about asking God for big things, radical things, outrageous things. Because when we just pray boldly, with just a, just a little bit of faith, God never says the amount of faith is what matters. It's just whatever faith you've got, just put it in God. Then when we take whatever faith we've got and we ask God for big things, he wants to use that to do amazing things that remind us, yeah, that's right, God, you are huge. It's fascinating, in the book of Acts, chapter 16, Paul, famous missionary in the first century, and one of his buddies, Silas, they, they'd been out doing Christian work and they, they got beaten up and they got thrown in jail. And here's what it says happened to them in Acts chapter 16, verse 25. It says, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. You ever wonder what they were thinking? Man, you just got beaten and thrown in jail. You're praying. You're singing. That's kind of weird. Well, get this. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken and all the doors flew open and everybody's chains were loosened. And then there was a big freak out scene and the jailers thought the prisoners were gone and it would mean their life and then it was a really big mess. Then finally, it actually ended up with a bunch of people believing in Jesus and coming to faith and having their whole lives and destinies changed. But that miracle... That unbelievable coincidence at that very moment, there was a kind of earthquake that not only opened all the doors, all their chains fell off. <gasps> That's an earthquake. That that miracle, it happened because these people had been praying for God to act. And it's amazing how often in the scripture, and it's amazing how often in the lives of those that follow God today, that when bold prayers are asked, incredible things happen that remind us God is huge. What are you praying for boldly? Hey, we could do this too. We, we could also give boldly. Yeah, give boldly. It is amazing how God shows up with new evidences of how big and powerful he is when we just like insanely, just like irrationally choose to give our stuff. 